Many places have a woman in white legend. The legend in my town goes like this. About 150 years ago, a woman and man were to be married. The courtship was short, the engagement was shorter. The bride waited for the groom at the church, but he never showed, nor did any guest on his side. The emotionally destroyed young bride ran outside the chapel and into the street, and she was run over by a horse and carriage. She died on the spot. When the families of the bride returned to their homes, they found them completely empty. The groom and his buddies had robbed the empty houses, and they split town. The wedding was a scam. According to legend, the spirit of the young bride lives on. She wanders near the remains of the old church in a white dress. And if you stop to pick her up, the bride will exact vengeance on your spouse or future spouse. She'll curse them, and sooner rather than later, your better half will die horrifically. Of course, this is all just local bullshit. People say they've seen her, kids mostly. Some have even claimed to have picked her up. But there's no photos, no video, just tales around a campfire. And everyone thinks it's a load of crap. The legend is just too popular to be true. Every person in town knows it, which sucks the mystery out of the entire story. But I have met a woman in white, and here's my story. I'm going through a divorce. It's shitty, and I wouldn't wish it upon anyone. Thank God we never had any kids. I'm in my early 30s, so at least I learned my lesson early on. And I am never getting married again. Every Tuesday night, I head about 10 miles out of town to a bar to meet up with buddies. It's a weekly tradition to help cheer me up from my miserable divorce proceedings. We've been doing it for months now. And because the bar is out of the way, down an old country road that sees little to no traffic on a Tuesday night, it's not uncommon for me to drive home after having five or six beers. Dumb? Yes. But I rarely see another car. And I always make it home with only a headache in the morning. About two months ago is when I saw her the first time. I was driving home from the bar around one in the morning, slightly buzzed, when I spotted her. A woman in a long white dress, ambling through knee-high weeds along the side of the road. It was foggy. I was going 50 miles per hour. But I was certain that it was a woman in a white dress. My head turned, and we made eye contact for a split second. I zoomed past. I looked in my rearview mirror, and she was gone. The following Tuesday, I saw her again, trudging through weeds in the same spot. I had forgotten all about her from the previous week. I sped past again, tightening my grip on the steering wheel. The booze was making me see things. Of course I had heard the legend of the woman in white, but I'm a grown man, and I don't believe in shit like that. I checked the rearview mirror. Again, she was gone. Same thing the next Tuesday, but this time I drive a little slower to make sure I'm not going crazy. I get a good look. It's a thin woman in her early 20s with a stained, white, lacy dress. Long, brown hair, pale skin, and even though she's trudging through weeds, it's almost graceful. My eyes travel up and down her body from head to toe. She's absolutely stunning. One of the most beautiful women I have ever seen. We make eye contact again, and we hold it for a bit longer this time. She smiles, and I consider pulling over. I can taste the booze on my lips, and that reminds me that I'm drunk. I'm imagining her. I turn my head to see if she's still there, and under the moonlight, I see it. An old, broken down church about 30 yards from the road. I press my foot on the gas and get the hell out of there. I wake up in my bed with a hangover. The next Tuesday, I'm probably eight beers in the hole when I leave the bar, drunk as a skunk. I see the woman in white again, same spot on the country road, stumbling gracefully through the weeds. I accelerate to 80 miles per hour, my car kicking up dirt on the old road. I don't look back. 
curiosity would get the better of me the following Tuesday. I nursed one beer all night. I wanted to be sober and convince myself that my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. I left the bar a little after midnight. And sure enough, the woman in white was there, on the same stretch of road. I passed her, slowed, and pulled over on the shoulder. The car idled, and I sat with my sweaty palms on the wheel. I looked in my mirrors, and I couldn't spot her. I turned my head, looked back, and didn't see one trace of her. My head turned forward, and I almost jumped out of my seat. The woman in white was standing five feet in front of my car, arms at her side. She smiled, and I opened the passenger door. She hesitated, and then she walked to the open door. She stood there. Do you need a ride? I said. She delicately sat down in the passenger seat and closed the door. The bottom half of her dress was filthy. She looked at me with soft, green eyes. Where are you supposed to be? I asked. She looked down, and for some reason I already felt comfortable enough to brush the hair out of her eyes. She reached up and gently touched my hand. Her skin was cold. Too cold. Her eyes met mine. Can I take you somewhere? I asked again. Take me with you, she said, almost in a whisper. I swallowed and removed my hand from hers. I put the car into drive and headed back to my house. I asked her a few questions. What's your name? Where are you from? But she remained silent. She pulled her knees up to her chest and stared out the window. But she didn't seem frightened. If anything, she seemed happy to be safe. We arrived at my house and I led her inside. I offered her a glass of water, but she shook her head. She crawled under the covers in the spare room and fell asleep. I left and shut the door, and I immediately headed for my laptop. I checked Google and my local online newspaper for news of missing women in the area. I found nothing and fell asleep. I woke up at 6 in the morning. I cracked the door of the guest room. The woman in white was still there. I showered, ate breakfast, and left a note for her on the kitchen table. Eat anything you want. And if you aren't here when I get home, that's fine. I thought about her all day at work. That soft face, those green eyes. Three times I picked up the phone to call the police and tell them that I had found a missing person. But each time, I put the phone back into the receiver. I can't explain why. Because they'd laugh at me for saying I found the mysterious woman in white? <sighs> I'm not sure. But I didn't call. She's still in the guest room when I get home from work. And she's still in the same dirty dress. And she still wouldn't talk. I grabbed my soon-to-be ex-wife's shorts and t-shirt, as well as a towel, and I led my mystery guest to the bathroom. I turned on the shower for her, and I placed her hand under the warm water. She pulled back a little, and finally she cracked a smile. I left the bathroom, shutting the door behind me. The shower is turned off 20 minutes later. I hear her return to the guest room. I crack the door an hour later, and she is asleep on the bed. Wet hair, but she had put back on the white dress. She is softly snoring. We made love for the first time the next night. I had awoken in the middle of the night to get a glass of water from the kitchen. I crawled back into bed, but I didn't feel alone. I turned over and nearly pissed myself from shock. She is under my covers, and she pulls me close to her. She isn't wearing the dress, and I feel her cold, naked body pressed against mine. I fall asleep soon after it's over, and I wake up alone. She is back in the guest room, in her white dress. Her behavior grows increasingly stranger over the next couple of days. In the middle of the night, I'd hear footsteps all around the house, up and down the hallway, up and down the stairs, rummaging in the refrigerator, a weird metallic banging from the basement. Once, I swore I even heard footsteps in the attic. But each time I investigated, I found her asleep in the guest room. 
One time, I came home from work to find a large piece of carpet torn up in my bedroom. I had to rip out the whole thing. And she still never said a word to me. Nothing after, take me with you, from inside the car. But every night, we make love. I never asked her to. Not once. She just comes into my room. The sixth night, she doesn't show. So I just go to sleep. I awake to her standing at the edge of my bed, bathed in moonlight, and wearing nothing. She crawls into bed with me. I have no idea how long she'd been standing there. I cancelled my bar plans with my friends the following Tuesday. I told them I wasn't up for it. It seemed weird to leave my woman in white. I'd left her for work during the day, but never at night. Around 8 p.m., headlights streamed into my living room. My buddies were at my house, unannounced. I couldn't let them see the woman in white. I quickly shuttled her to the basement, and I told her to wait down there until my friends left. She sat on an old couch, and I went upstairs to greet my friends. They were worried about me, and they were here to play cards. So, after about an hour of playing poker in the living room, I went to the fridge to grab a few more beers. When I got back, my buddy Ryan was gone. My other friend Chris said Ryan had smelled something weird and heard an odd noise coming from the basement, and he went to investigate. Trying to not look too concerned, I quickly head down to the basement and found Ryan poking around. He said that he smelled rotten fruit and thought he had heard a strange crash. <laughs> Thankfully, he hadn't seen my woman in white. He headed back upstairs, when suddenly a cold hand reached around and covered my face from behind. It pulled me back into a dark corner underneath the staircase. I knew the coldness of the hand. It was my woman in white, and she shushed me quiet. I reached backwards and felt for her. I run my hand up and down her cold skin. She wasn't wearing the dress. She was wearing nothing. She released me, and I spun around. We made love quietly and quickly on the floor, and I returned upstairs to the game. I never did smell the rotten fruit. That night, I heard a sobbing from the guest room. I cracked the door and she was sitting on the bed, head in hands, crying. I pushed open the door a little more and was about to speak when her head jerked up. The crying is silenced, and she stared at me with what I swear were glowing eyes. There was intent in those eyes. For some reason, I thought she wanted to harm me. After a minute or two, I backed away and closed the door. I slept with my door locked. She didn't visit me that night. The following day, I made up my mind. I'm taking her back where I found her. I had no idea who she was or where she came from, but I figured I should take her back to the exact same spot at the exact same time that I had originally found her. A little after midnight, she gets into my car willingly, and she balls up the same way she did a week ago. There were no words between us. I drive to what I think is the spot, and I pull over. I idle the engine, get out, and walk around to the passenger side. I open her door and she gets out, and just starts ambling through the weeds again. She doesn't look back. I take a look around for the old church I saw that one time, but I don't see it. I put my car into gear, pull a U-turn, and drive off. This time I see her in the mirror, walking into a wooded area. She vanishes into the trees. I am fearful of her return. My woman in white was out of my life as quickly as she came into it and I thought she might want to come back. I had stopped thinking about the lovemaking. All I saw were those glowing eyes. I was constantly nervous, and I began drinking nightly. I set up a home security system and triple-checked my doors and windows every night to make sure that they were locked. I cleaned the whole house, top to bottom, scrubbed every square foot of floor, every inch of wall. I wanted every trace of her to be gone. And maybe if the house smelled different, she wouldn't find her way back. 
She wasn't an animal, but it just felt better this way. It felt like I was cleansing myself of her. But she didn't come back. Two weeks later, I'm at a convenience store in town, buying a 12-pack of beer. I overhear a couple of teenagers talking about a woman in white, and how one of them had seen her along a dusty road late at night. She looked murderous, he said, and the flesh was melting off her face as she cackled with laughter, chasing after his car in the darkness. The listening friend punched the other in the shoulder. Stop bullshitting me, dude, he said. I paid for my beer and walked outside. I noticed a missing person sign taped to the storefront. It was a woman in her early 30s, last seen a few weeks ago. Blonde hair, 5 foot 4, 115 pounds. Last seen wearing black pants and a black tank top. Well, it wasn't my woman. My woman always wore white, and she had brown hair. But it got me thinking. This missing woman, someone must really miss her. And she probably really misses whoever put up that sign. I started my car and drove on down the road. I wondered if I should pay my woman in white another visit. I wondered if she missed me.